Hey guys, my name is Anthony Delgado, and today we're going to talk about how to prepare for technical slash coding interviews. So this can be tough, especially if you're coming fresh out of a boot camp. Things like imposter syndrome uh, can creep in, and you don't know what to expect when going on technical and coding interviews. I've been on dozens of these, so hopefully I can provide some insight to help you guys out on your journey. Um, so I'm going to go through some general tips for coding interviews. Then we're going to jump through a process of how to solve technical questions. And then after that, we're going to follow up with some good resources that you guys can check out to hopefully help you prepare and be better equipped for technical and coding interviews. First things first, be confident, right? So Try to practice, practice in the mirror if you have to. A lot of developers are not naturally social people. So you definitely want to be able to project that confidence that you are able to get the job done and that you're likable and that you are able to execute upon the tasks that are going to be delivered to you. So be confident, be yourself. Culture fit is like a huge thing at a lot of these companies. So definitely be yourself and don't be too rigid, but at the same time, be confident and project that, you know, that you are the awesome rock star developer that we all know that you are. Next up, practice the basics. So as developers, as we're building projects, one of the things that tends to happen is we use 101 cool hipster frameworks, right? And, and frameworks are great. And frameworks will definitely help you once you get on the job. But most technical interview questions and coding assignments are usually given in the vanilla framework of the language. So with JavaScript or even even non-JavaScript rules, a lot of them will have you do a JavaScript vanilla test. So you won't be able to use jQuery or React or Angular or any of these frameworks that you would actually use in production, once you get the job, you would be using vanilla JavaScript or vanilla Python or vanilla PHP, etc. So get familiar with the basics of your programming language. At the end, we're going to go through some good resources to brush it up, but definitely practice the basics. And again, <laughs> so if if JavaScript, if you're looking for a JavaScript role, vanilla JavaScript, get familiar with it. Get familiar with how to do loops and on-click events and how to, you know, splice arrays. Get comfortable with doing that stuff without a framework and brush up on it if, if you need a refresher. Next up is, is practice your typing skills, right? The worst thing that you want to do is get on an interview and start copying, pasting every single a function and variable name get comfortable using the keyboard get comfortable using Emmet but then also not using Emmet so you're not 100% sure what they're gonna give you in the coding interview I would say bring your own laptop and hopefully you'll get lucky and be able to use that laptop but a lot of times they'll give you a laptop it might be loaded up with sublime sublime might not have Emmet installed on it yet or they might give you, you know, a regular text editor like you really don't know. So get used to typing fast, proficiently. Try not to copy and paste. It does not look good on an interview if you're constantly copying and pasting. And try not to Google every single part of the solution, too. So if you have to Google something, go right ahead. Like, don't get stuck. But at the same time, if you're going to practice, practice solving problems without Google. Practice uh, letting errors run in the console and fixing those errors as opposed to Googling um, 110%. Again, this is something where on the actual job, are you going to be able to use Google? Absolutely. Are you going to be able to copy and paste if that's your preference? Absolutely. But on the coding interview, you want to appear as proficient as possible. So the less Googling and the less copying and pasting that you can do, the better. Demonstrate that you semantically, line for line, are able to type the code without copying and pasting from google <laughs> or stack overflow right all right cool enough about practice let's jump into how you would solve an actual real world coding interview so first things first be the problem solver right so be the rock star rodeo star cowboy developer that's going to solve the problem and get the job done 
So prove to the interviewer that you are able to solve problems and think analytically. It's super important. So the first thing that you want to do when you are given a problem is restate the problem to the interviewer. Translate the problem in plain English and give a concrete example that demonstrates that you fully understand the problem. So the worst thing that you could do is start solving a problem and it's not even the problem that the interviewer intended that you solve. And additionally, you want to be able to represent that you have a clear cut understanding of how you're going to solve the problem technically and what the problem is. So restate the problem to the interviewer and make sure that you make a connection of this is the problem, you know, even apply to a real world solution. So if the task was to do real time routing for a restaurant, right? You know, you can say, hey, so is this like the Uber for restaurants? Does that make sense? But again, demonstrate that you fully understand the problem to the interviewer. So next up, after you've done that and you've made that connection that you both understand the problem, articulate your thought process. So think out loud, think through the problem and effectively communicate what you think your solution is going to be. So one of the worst things that you could do is to not restate the problem, right? Go into a corner, create something that the interviewer has no idea what you're creating and then and present it to them and leave the ball in their court to decipher how did you arrive there what did you even try to solve so you could go into the corner and come back and maybe solve the wrong problem right so articulate your thought process communicate clearly to the interviewer that you have an understanding and that you can work with others on a team so a lot of times you'll in in a real production environment you may be working alongside people who are not developers at all one of the people on your coding interview or more than one of the people in your coding interview could be non-technical people. It could be one technical, one or two technical people and one or two people who are not technical, right? So articulate to everyone in the room what your thought process is and help them understand how you're going to solve it. So the next step is to state your hypothesis, right? So When I was a kid, I went to a lot of science fairs and the hypothesis was like one of the most important parts of uh, winning all those science fairs that I did as a child. But before you start coding, before you jump into the code editor, before you start piping out your solution, state your hypothesis. So first things first, state your problem, what you think the problem is, get the interviewer to agree with you. So, hey, this is the Uber for restaurants. Great. The way that I would build the solution for the uber for restaurants would be x y and z so before you start coding state your hypothesis step by step to the interviewer so that they're on the same page with you next up is discuss your approach so explain how and why you came to your hypothesis so we're building the uber for restaurants and i believe that Twilio's real-time routing would be able to facilitate that using their task router API. And the reason that I believe that it could be successful is because we want to route orders based on task and priority, right? So state the how, what, when, and why. It's very similar to (laughs) science fair projects in in third grade. It's um, going through and identifying what the problem is, hypothesizing how you're going to solve it, and then discussing how you're going to approach it. And you're doing all of this before you even fire up the code editor. Make sure that every member of the interviewing team is buying in to what your solution is before you begin to execute. So next up is time to execute. (laughs) So after you've explained what your process is to the interviewer now it's time to implement your solution Um, when you do so use expressive code that has well-named variables and function names so one of the worst things you could do is go onto a coding interview and start writing code and i'll give you an example using one letter variable names and function names for all (laughs) of your variables and functions right it's not semantic your interviewer is not going to know what's going on easily so use 
names in variables and functions that are semantic and honestly you should be doing this in production code anyway but you really want even someone who's not technical to be able to read your code and say hey here's a variable named restaurant here's a variable named server here's a variable named menu here's a function called place order and the place order function accepts these three or four variables right you want even a human, <laughs> even someone who is not a developer, even someone in HR to be able to read your code and understand it at least semantically. So use variable names and function names that are semantic as you're writing these functions and these variables. Continue to be expressive, continue to express yourself and your thought process as you code. And that actually jumps us into the next one. So coding plus communication equals success. You don't have to be coding in silence. Like that's the most awkward thing you can do again is to go into the corner, start coding in silence and come back with a solution 30 minutes or an hour later. Right. So explain your process each step of the way. And, you know, you don't want to ask the interviewer for the answer, but hey, get feedback from them. Hey, do you think we should approach it like this? One of the things that I have found on coding interviews is they do have a solution that they are trying to lead you to so there's more than one way to skin a cat but unfortunately on a coding interview there's one solution that they're trying to get you to so make sure around uh, while you're going on your journey of solving the problem and coding it make sure that you're going to the solution that they want the worst thing you could do is do it the way that they didn't intend and then be confrontational and get into an argument with them and say hey well this works and that works no identify what it is that they are trying to solve because in this exchange they are the client and you are trying to provide the service of solving this interview question in the way that they have intended so while you're coding communicate communicate for two reasons one to make sure that you're on the right track and two to articulate and demonstrate that you have a high level understanding of how to solve the problem after you have the solution discuss further improvements so in a 30 minute coding interview challenge right you may not write the most efficient most reusable most readable piece of code that you've ever written right so reflect on what your solution is and then talk about the ways that you can improve it and make it better in the future. Again, demonstrate the higher level understanding that you have. And if there are shortcomings in your code, talk about how you could make it better in the future. Talk about how this wouldn't scale at a certain scale. Talk about any shortcomings that you may have um, with your code. So next up, I'm going to talk about additional resources. Again, these are links to places that can help you prep for your coding interview so first up i have a book this book is actually on its sixth edition it is a classic and it just continues to grow with each edition this is called cracking the coding interview it's up to 189 programming questions and solutions i think i had the fifth edition which was about 150 questions so they keep adding new editions with new questions and um Honestly, if you go through this, notoriously, a lot of companies have used these questions in the past. It's a lot of questions. Don't get hung up on reading every single one unless you have a lot of time on your hands. But definitely check it out. Ch check some of the more popular programming questions and solutions, and this will definitely put you in a good space. Next up is Code Academy. So Code Academy, for those of you who don't know, it's a free resource that has coding similar to a coding technical question but instead these are presented in more of a learning fashion but they do give you a problem and you have to solve the problem i guess the only difference is they give you hints and try to get you to the solution quicker but definitely like their vanilla javascript course it's kind of long but it's really good you should definitely go through it if you need a, a catch up vanilla javascript Additionally, they have Python, they have Ruby, they have PHP, they have Git command line, they have various API courses that you can kind of jump into. There's a 
there's two React courses, an Angular course. So definitely check out Code Academy. It's uh, completely free. Um, I think you can pay additional if you want like mentoring. I think they have like digital tutoring that goes on on the platform, but it's completely free to dive into their coursework. So definitely check that out. And last up, we have Hacker Rank. Now, Hacker Rank just got on my radar rather recently, but Hacker Rank is awesome. It has a wealth of content. And this is really more geared towards the type of questions that you would have on a coding interview. So they're very short. Bloomberg, interesting fact, Bloomberg actually uses Hacker Rank as both a way of determining candidates' eligibility. So if you have a very high Hacker Rank, you can actually put that on your resume and advertise that to HR hiring managers, right? But Hacker Rank is a lot of short questions that you answer. It's like problems very similar to interviewing problems and they progress and they get harder the more questions that you answer so every single language that you want to get proficient in in hacker rank starts off with a hello world and then the questions get progressively harder and harder and harder and as you answer more questions you level up and you acquire a higher hacker rank and you compete against every developer in the world that's on hacker rank so it's a really cool site definitely check it out i think they have a 30-day coding challenge so if you go to hacker rank and you give them your email they'll email you a new interview question once a day to have you figure it out but again definitely check out hacker rank very dope resource all right cool so that's it those are my tips for technical interview questions if you found any benefit or any value from this please subscribe and thank you for listening all right guys have a good day